Hello, yes, that's right. It's Joe here, live for Joyrider TV, back in the Joyrider TV studios. Very nice to be home. Uh, what a lovely time it was at the boat show in Dusseldorf. Um, as you will have seen, not quite as many catamaran exhibitors as I would have liked. So perhaps for next year, um, we can get together with the class associations of all the big classes and see if we could put together a kind of more of a community stand of maybe eight different uh, classes. You know, we could pick the biggest ones, such as uh, starting with the biggest, maybe um, some sort of foiling NACRA 20, the Tornado, um, F-18, A-class, maybe... Uh, foiling A-class and classic A-class on the stand, NACRA 17, then the 16 footers, the Formula 16, the Hobie 16, uh, NACRA 15, loads of different classes on one stand. Wouldn't that be good? Yeah, I think people would really like that. And then the Hobie 14, of course, maybe some other 14 footers, maybe um, something from Australia like the Windrush, 14 might be a good uh, addition to the group. And then perhaps on the same stand uh, could have a bit of a feature for beginners catamarans, like uh, formula plastic, as I like to call it, like the Dart 16, the topper topaz that we saw, uh, the RS um, plastic um catamaran which we saw then the hobie wave on there as well the dragoon things like that wouldn't that be good what do you reckon i think it would be good and i'm thinking like the stand would be a circle in the middle of the hall with all of the catamarans pointing outwards between the bows of each catamaran a screen showing that type of boat in action wouldn't that be good yes i think it would because um, what is needed is more. I know that these boat show stands cost an absolute fortune to rent. And if um, if you're not selling boats, like if you are from a class association and you're just there to promote your class, there's not a lot of return in it. And that is pretty much blowing your whole marketing budget for more than a year just to exhibit at such a an exhibition. But that's what I was thinking anyway. I think that's a good idea. Um, anyway, as it said on the strap line, we're going to have a look into how to get started in catamaran sailing. And this has been um, prompted by Firm Button 6485, who says, I've always loved the idea of sailing. Um, I um, once went out in my teens now significantly older, but now I can afford it uh, monetary, uh, monetary and time-wise, what is the best way to start? It's a very good question. Like if you really, if you didn't have any friends who are already into sailing, uh, perhaps uh, there wasn't a sailing club nearby, then how would you get into the sport? I think the first, let's break it down into different things. So the first one is the venue. Where, near to where you live, or um, it wants to be reasonably near, where are you thinking that sailing could be a possibility? Do you live near to the coast? Is there a lake nearby, that kind of thing, um, or a big river or something? Ideally, you want the best for starting would be a lake or, uh, yeah, lake definitely is the best because a lake is much safer than sailing on the sea. And also the benefit with a lake or reservoir um, is that, there's more likely to be a club there with safety cover included. And um, on a lake, if it all goes wrong, 
you're going to end up getting blown onto um, land, basically. So there's a lot less uh, jeopardy involved in going sailing on a lake. So first choice is where would I go sailing if I had the chance? I think a lake is good, but uh, on the sea is good. If there's a river that doesn't flow particularly quickly, that is probably the more difficult uh, environment to start catamaran sailing, but not out of the question. All right. So then um, what are you going to do for a boat? Um, are you, is there a place that you could rent a boat from? That's a good start. Um, or is there a club? The best possible option is if there is a sailing club and if it's a sailing club that actually offers instruction, then that is an absolute winner for getting into the sport. But of course, uh, depending on where you are, that isn't always going to be a, a possibility. So if, if, if there is a club, a lot of the time they might have a club boat that is... Uh, available to try. Uh, if not, if there's a club, the other good way of getting into the sport is how I got into catamaran sailing, which was to go to my local sailing club and just talk to as many people as possible and say, um, I'm available as a crew uh, on a catamaran. Is anybody looking for a crew? Because quite often people are looking for crew so if you offer yourself up as crew and if perhaps you've got some sailing gear before you start offering yourself up. So when I say sailing gear is maybe you need a wetsuit uh, if the water's not so warm, if you're not in the Caribbean or somewhere similar, um, you need a wetsuit. I'd say the all right starting points of sailing gear for real world environment going out sailing a wetsuit uh probably a something like a four three wetsuit that's the thickness of the rubber um a pair of good sailing shoes again wetsuit shoes very nice wetsuit boots if it is uh colder conditions so you're covered in rubber now nice third thing which is good to have is a spray top that's basically like a raincoat but it's specific for wearing when you go sailing because a lot of wetsuits they don't prevent wind chill uh and once they get wet if they um if you're getting if you're wet and there's quite a lot of wind you can get quite cold so a spray top um this is going to stop that wind chill good third piece of equipment Equipment piece number four would be a trapeze harness. Uh, there's, we won't go into the trapeze harness so much just now, but um, trapeze harness is a good thing to have. And the last one, very important, is a buoyancy aid. That is uh, like the flotation vest, which is in most places, it's a legal requirement to have it on when you go sailing. And if it's not a legal requirement, then it's certainly a very sensible thing to be wearing. So have some gear. If um, that is good, with whichever way you're getting into the sport, um, because it's even if you're going to a rental place and they could say, oh, we've got all the gear, you can borrow it. I'd feel a bit nicer putting my own wetsuit on than a wetsuit that perhaps somebody else has been wearing just beforehand, um, that kind of thing. So nice to have your own gear. And by making a purchase, it does, it's like you're, um, you're stating your intention. I've bought this stuff. I am going to do this sport. Yes, I am. By buying the gear, you're going to do it. Uh, what happens quite a lot is you buy the gear and then nothing happens for the next six weeks. But you've got the gear there ready. Very nice. Um, some sort of hat, like um, a Total Joyrider beanie. Very good idea to have. And in fact, you could get one 
from totaljoyrider.com. Yeah. Um, and you'd be supporting the channel. So get some gear, know where you're going to sail. Um, then either see about renting a boat, but most places won't rent you a boat if you've got no experience at all. But if they are renting boats, then they should be able to offer instruction as well. And it is definitely worth if there is the possibility to have instruction for your first um, couple of times out. A very good idea. But let's say that is not a possibility. Then what do you do? If there's a lake nearby and it is allowed to sail on that lake, but there's not a club, uh, there isn't a rental place and you don't know anybody who's got a boat. In fact, you don't see people sailing there very often. Then perhaps maybe then it's time to start having a look for a boat. Um, it's a good idea not to go out and buy a brand new boat as your first boat because you might, I don't know, it's new boats are expensive. That's what I learned at the boat show. Um, and uh, a used boat, you'll also, with a used boat, perhaps have the opportunity to have a chat with the person you're buying it off. If it's nearby, perhaps they could even come out on the water with you for your first sail. That would be a good after sale service. But um, a used boat, and you could go for all sorts of different catamarans, like this uh, formula plastic uh, type catamaran, like uh, the Dart 16, which is, I see that as the industry standard of a roto molded catamaran. Uh, that would be a good choice if there was one available um, or something else roto molded between usually 14, 16 feet long. Very user friendly, very hard wearing and uh, very simple. So there's not too much stuff on the boat to get confused with. So that is a choice of boat. But of course, as we know, uh, there are more Hobie 16s in the world than any, well, than all the other catamarans put together, if you added up the numbers, uh, which means you're more likely to find a used Hobie 16 than any other type of catamaran. Uh, so is a Hobie 16 a good choice for your first boat? It's not the perfect choice, but as long as you don't try going out in too much wind straight away, then yes, it's a good choice because um, the Hobie 16 is very durable. Uh, it will uh, it will last for a long time. But more than that is it will keep you interested for a long time because it comes with its set of challenges. And to sail a Hobie 16, you have to use good technique, which means you can't get away with using poor technique, which perhaps on um, a boat which is specific for beginner sailors, you can get away with putting in bad tacks and things. And um, the six, the Hobie 16 won't let you do that. What about the Hobie 14? That is even tougher to sail than the 16. So your technique really has to be good on a Hobie 14. But you'll pick up uh, possibly a used Hobie 14 um, could be one of the cheapest boats out there. Um, yeah. So there we go. And then so you've got your venue, you've got your sailing gear, um, you've got the this boat on the trailer, you've towed it to the venue. Next thing to do is to know how to put the boat together. So fortunately, um, on Joyrider TV, there are many videos uh, explaining how to assemble the catamaran. Two main types of catamaran um, as a sort of standard kind of not exactly the same, but they'll certainly give you the right idea is the first one is the Hobie 16 type of catamaran. So watch all of the videos 
about assembling a Hobie 16 and how you rig it. And then the other type of catamaran is like your, your F-18 type catamaran, which most other boats would be fairly similar to that. Um, so if your boat's more similar to that, like the Formula Plastic boats, which I've been talking about, they're probably a bit more similar to the F-18 style boat than the Hobie 16. Now, the other style of boat, which I haven't made any videos on uh, because of a lack of resources, is the Dart 18 style of catamaran, um, which assembles quite differently to the others. But you'll still, by watching the Hobie 16 and F-18 uh, and Tornado, perhaps, um, assembly videos and rigging, you'll have a pretty good idea of what to do. Might not be perfect, but it will still work. So having done your revision, watch the videos, perhaps have it loaded up on your telephone so that um, when you're down at your venue, or what I did when I first got my boat, my first boat was a Dart 18, incidentally, um, was I uh, built the boat in the back garden and took it apart probably about four times, four or five times before I actually got the boat to the water. I just um, put the boat together, masked up, lovely, uh, did a bit of practice trapezing in the garden, uh, took the boat apart, and then the next weekend put it together again. And um, that way I had a really good uh, knowledge of how to assemble the boat. So when I was out in public, I didn't look like I absolutely didn't have a clue. Um, so boat is assembled. What's next? First time out. Don't, you know, I know that everybody has got a limited amount of time. So most people only have time at the weekend. What if at the weekend it's 20 knots of wind? If you are going out alone for the first time, yes, you've studied all the videos, so you know what to do. But when you go out for the first time, things are going to happen pretty quickly in 20 knots of wind. So if you're desperate to get out, then you will need to recruit somebody experienced to go out with you. Um, because if you go out in strong wind for your first time, it is quite likely that something is going to go wrong. And what you don't want to do is put yourself off for life, which could happen if you went out in too much wind too soon. So I would say there should be like a 10 knot limit for your first time out. If you're going out without somebody experienced and you haven't done it before, then 10 knots is about the maximum that you'd want to be going out in. So how are you going to know how much wind there is? Um, have I got one here? Yeah, I think I might have. Uh, then what is a good idea? Have I? Have I? Sorry, I'm just having a look. Um, what I'm looking for is a handheld anomometer. If there is one, I can't find it. And um, <laughs> right. Um, yeah, it's a little wind speed meter. It's called an anomometer. Um, and it will tell you how much wind there is. But I think everybody has got a reasonable gauge of, oh, it's windy. Oh, it's this wind is light. So if the wind is light, you're good to go. And then the last thing with the wind, even if you are sailing on a reasonably small lake, so if this is your lake, and maybe you're launching from here. Of course, watch the videos on launching and coming back in. Um, it's all there. And in fact, exciting times, an exciting announcement coming this summer from Joyrider TV. That's basically me. Um, I'm going to make a comprehensive beginner's course for catamaran sailing. So if you were in this situation of really not knowing where to start, 
how to go about it. First step would be to get hold of this course. It will be a video course, uh, not on YouTube. And um, you can it will then take you step by step into exactly what to do and with a variety of different types of boat as well. So, yes, I am going to have to get hold of a Dart 16 uh, so that the Dart 16 is represented. But, um, yeah, watch the videos on YouTube about how to launch the boat. And then the wind direction, this is important because, because if it's the wrong direction and things go wrong, uh, you're basically going to have uh, a much tougher time getting back to your starting point. Because let's say that's where you've got your car parked. It's a convertible. All right. So the wind direction should be anywhere from here to here. So anywhere in this range. Um, because to get back to the beach is much easier when the wind is blowing you back there. If um, the wind is blowing what we call offshore, which would be anything like this, it is going to be harder to get back in as a first time sailor. So try to pick your venue or if you've got a choice of where to launch from, uh, like let's say this is a lake and it's just basically beach all the way round. The, the easiest by far is with the wind coming from the side because then you can just go straight out, turn around, come back in, think, let's give it another go, um, tack round. So your first time out, wind from here, your sail out, and then while you've still got plenty of space, you'll go for a tack, which is turning the boat through the wind, and then you'll come back down, and tack at this end, and you'd basically be sailing this figure of eight course, just tacking at each end. But before, when you go for your tack, just make sure that it's not right before you're going to hit land. But of course, if um, if you have got another beach at that end and your tack isn't going so well, you could practice jumping off the boat, turning it into wind, pushing it round setting off from that side, uh, that would be a really good place to go out from. Um, yeah, so I think that is all I'm going to say on the topic of what would be a good way to start if you hadn't done any before. But um, I'll let you know, of course, when this course comes out, um, it's going to be my main bit of work uh in the spring this year is putting that together. Very much looking forward to it, by the way. All right. Uh, good afternoon. Or whatever time of day it is for you out there. So let's just check in with everybody who is in the Joyrider Sailing Clubhouse right now. We've got Mark and Janet on board in Ohio. Uh, Mark's just watched every episode of Show Us Your Cat. What a treat. That's a great way of spending your Friday morning um, to deal with mid-winter blues. I think everyone should do that. In fact, get inspired. Send me pictures of your boat because I'm still waiting for more content before I can put together either an episode of Show Us Your Cat or What Went Wrong. Um, so there we go. Uh, Mark says, congrats to the Prestige Magazine Adventure Holiday Award. I don't actually know anything about this. So perhaps if you could uh, drop a link there, Mark, that would be great. So I can have a look at that. Uh, OK, we've got Ryan on Maui. Uh, it's Friday again. Yep, it certainly is. We've got Evo. Uh, it says hello to everyone. Leland Lee's there in Clearwater, Florida. Speaking of Florida and the USA, as you may know, I am going on the next leg of my world tour 
first leg complete. I've been to Germany, but the next leg is, uh, I've written down the dates actually. I'm thinking, well, basically I'm going to be in Ocean Springs, Mississippi between probably the 30th of March and the 8th of April. Uh, there's two events going on at Ocean Springs, Mississippi. The first one is the Hobie 14 North American Championships. Very good if you sail a Hobie 14, get down there, do that event. Second one is called the Mid Winters East uh, for all different types of catamaran, all levels of experience. Um, it's going to be a great time. And I'll, I'll be there. There'll be a lot of other experienced sailors there who can help you if you're less experienced. If you are more experienced as well, we'll be there to give you a good run for your money on the race course, of course. But if you are in the vicinity of that bit of the USA or fairly nearby, then my itinerary for when I'm in um, America isn't set at this time. So if you want some one-to-one -one instruction on your boat, perhaps you'd like me to have a look at your rudders, that kind of thing, then get in touch sooner rather than later so that we can make a plan. So I'm thinking probably of coming uh, across the Atlantic uh, maybe a week before the event. So there's time for me to visit other sailors, uh, perhaps on that stretch of coastland, maybe flying into Orlando and then flying out of New Orleans, I'm told. This is how it's pronounced. Um, yeah, so uh, get in touch if you want me to get on your boat with you uh, for a modest fee. But that's uh, what's going to keep Joyrider TV going is uh, this sort, all, all these sorts of things. Uh, under the same banner, in fact, we've got up now the brand new, um, what's it called? Uh, the speed stick, the 2024 speed stick. And um, there's plenty of space on there. So if you have got the opportunity to get out um, sailing, then uh, take a GPS with you, get on the speed stick. Let's see if I can. No, I can't. All right. Um, answer that pretty quickly. But um, yeah, get on the speed stick and um, check out the speed stick at the moment because to commemorate this new 2024 speed stick, I've come up with a new design. And I think like for T-shirts, hoodies, other things, whatever you want it on. Um, and I think you'll find it is pretty cooking, that new design. So a uh, great way of supporting Joyrider TV is to get over to uh, totaljoyrider.com and uh, get yourself some gear. Yes. All right. So um, continuing with the checking in, uh, Benny's on board in uh, Sweden. Hi, Benny. Rafnix81 is with us. Uh, that's a name I don't recognize. So hello. Uh, great that you can make it. Mr. Tony KP is in Ebeltoft, Denmark, as always. OK, uh, Ryan, I think commenting about my um, next year's uh, Dusseldorf boat show ideas says Joe's got vision. Yep. All right. Evo says I'm starting with a NACRA 5.5 that I just bought two weeks ago. Great stuff. I think the 5.5 is a good choice. Um, one thing to look at, I didn't mention this, when, um, you know, because you don't always get to choose. Maybe it's like the boat chooses you because of what's available. Um, perhaps you don't have the choice of every type of catamaran. So, the ones to go for, if you have the choice, it's all about hull shape. We've been here before. This boat ended up being quite short and not very attractive. But um, basically, you want, for your first catamaran, it's better if you can have a boat with a skeg hull. So if we look from behind... It's going to be this shape hull. Um, the other 
two types of hull. We yes, we have talked about this before. Is the asymmetric hull where, um, like on a Hobie sixteen, or the other type of hull would be. like this which is like the nacra 5.5 which has either a dagger board or a pivoting center board so the skeg hull number one asymmetric hull number two as a beginner because you having the dagger board or center board it gives you something else that you have to use that you um need to control but also it is it makes the boat more fragile because if you hit the bottom with this bad boy, damage will probably occur. So better off not to have one on your first boat. There we go. Um, Jan Leo uh, of uh, Tornado uh, fame. You will have uh, remembered Jan Leo from the Tornado videos from the world's last year. Most of the time. Uh, yeah, Leo was sailing away from me on the downwind legs. Uh, very quick down down downwind. Mm. Uh, yeah, Leo is just tuning back in from Colorado. Five more weeks until it's back to sailing. Got Aaron on board. Uh, crack of dawn in New Zealand. Glad you could make it, Aaron. By the way, if you're wondering in the live chat why some people's names are in green, that is because they're channel members. So if you want to become a channel member, just head over to the Joyrider TV YouTube channel, just the main channel page, and just click on memberships and everything will be explained there. Channel member Declan is on board as well. Hope you have all had a good week. Not bad. Um, yeah, sunny here in Greece. But uh, no wind uh, to speak of. All right. We've got Max on board um, going out on Lake Simsea with Gerhard. Gerhard, um, for those of you who've been watching the videos for a long time, Gerhard's been in quite a few of these videos um, over the years. Uh, so that's in Germany. All right. Jan Leo says, you can go very deep into the gear rabbit hole, or, or so I've heard from a friend. Yeah, it's quite true. When shopping for sailing gear, it's it just keeps going. So boots, wetsuit, spray top, buoyancy aid, trapeze harness, woolly hat, um, if it's going to be chilly. If it's going to be warm, hat with a peak. Or if you're going to be sailing in a stronger wind, uh, maybe a helmet is a good idea. All right. Um, we've got Richard on board from the Villages, Florida, sailing out of Gulfport Yacht Club, Florida. Nice to have you on board, Richard. I think this might be a first time uh, in the live chat. Uh, Toot's with us from Texas. Uh, Toot is just reminding everybody to hit the like button. Thanks, Toot. Cuck Solly's with us as well. All right, we've got uh, Willem, who says, I recently saw a mosquito for sale in South Africa. Is it similar to the Dart 16? Thoughts on the mosquito or mosquito? Yeah, the mosquito is, um, as far as I'm aware, mostly sailed in Australia. And uh, we did feature on a few episodes of Show Us Your Cat ago so if you want to see some more um some more pictures of a mosquito catamaran have a look on um on uh through show us your cat the, and it will say in the title the ones that are in australia those the more recent ones in australia are the ones to look at but um i think the mosquito looks like a great boat if um especially now the thing that is always going to attract me to one type of boat rather than another. No, it's not the size of the mainsail. No, it's not the color. No, it's not the go faster stripes. Yes, it is. It's if there are other boats 
of that type being used where you're going to be going out sailing. Because what is really nice with any type of sailing is if you can get out and sail, whether it's in a competition or just for fun, but if you're with other boats of the same type, there's just something special about that. Um, so if there's other mosquitoes about at your club in South Africa, then Willem, um, I'd say it's a great choice. But either way, it looks like a good boat. I can't remember exactly, but I think we're looking at a centerboard style hull. Um, what is it? 14, 15 feet long. Um, you can sail it single handed or as a double hander, single handed just with the mainsail, double handed with the jib and a crew on the trapeze. So that means it's quite versatile. And um, if you are looking at doing some competition, then you can sail it fairly evenly, uh, regardless of whether you've got a crew or not. So I think it's a good boat. And um, if I was sailing somewhere where there was a fleet of mosquitoes, I would get one. Because uh, you've got to sail against uh, boats of the same type if you can. All right, Jan Leo says, I just noticed the live video quality is much better. What happened? Um, yeah, perhaps, I don't know. Um, it might be that the uh, internet, which is pretty sort of wind up internet here on the Greek island, um, is just running a bit better today um yeah other than that i couldn't say what it is uh the studio lighting is obviously uh top notch i've got a new webcam uh that was donated by another youtube channel called colonel failure if you like your video uh games uh delivered in the same style as your joyrider tv check out colonel failure because that guy happens to be my brother. Yeah. Um, very entertaining videos uh, delivered just like this. But, well, with this kind of voice and words um, and uh, the sense of humour. So uh, check out Colonel Failure, uh, who donated the webcam. Uh, thank you very much. Um, yeah, we got Marty on board in Switzerland from Lake Sempak. Great stuff. I dare say you're still covered in snow there, Marty. Um, very good. Duke is with us. Um, it says X Games 2024 in Ventura, California. Everybody visit and try to get on TV. June 2024. Yeah, that'll be good. I do enjoy the X Games. Who uh, Incidentally, Casey. Right, we've got Spicy Fist One on board. Um, nice to have you with us from uh, somewhere in the, um, gosh, some memory test, all this, uh, from the northwest of England, perhaps. Right, we've got Kevin from Illinois, USA in the live chat. Uh, B is with us. Thanks for these good explanations. That's uh, Branko in Germany. Ah, this is um, very important. Declan who he knows, Declan's a guy who knows. He said, the Speedstick 24 kit looks amazing. Great design. Um, thanks, Declan, for the endorsement. Yeah, I think if you've got a spare tab on your browser, then check out on the Speedstick page uh, at totaljoyrider.com and check out those new designs and maybe even get one. It's a good idea. Incidentally, everything at TotalJoyRider.com is shipping from every continent. So it doesn't matter where you are. Um, it will be shipping from reasonably near to you. Um, I use printers around the world. So I use a printer in Australia, one in America, uh, a couple in Europe. In fact, a couple in America. Unfortunately, uh, not one in South Africa um, at this time, but that could change. So for South Africa, things would ship from Europe, I would guess. Um, 
All right, we've got Rob on board in the Netherlands. Uh, good to have you with us, Rob. Yves, or Yves is with us in Mauritius. Gabby um, in Mauritius, repairing some damages on a Hobie 16 after the cyclone. Yeah, I saw um, it's been pretty fierce. So good luck with that. Hope it's all going well in Mauritius. Um, incidentally, in Mauritius right now, it is the 10th anniversary party today uh, of Wildwind Mauritius. If you don't know, a great way of getting into sailing is actually to go on one of these kind of sailing holidays where you get instruction as part of the holiday and all of your equipment. Uh, in the summer, of course, the European summer, the best place you could possibly go is wild wind sailing holidays uh, here on the Greek island of Lefkas. But in the winter, very good place to go is wild wind sailing holidays in Mauritius, where that cyclone's gone now. So should be plain sailing from here on. And uh, they've got some absolutely marvellous instructors down there at wild wind Mauritius. Very good sailors and very good instructors. So if you're not sure of where to go, um, if you've got a bit of spare change in your pocket and you'd like to go somewhere hot to go sailing, the water in Mauritius is ridiculous. It's like sailing in a bath. It's that warm, I think. <coughs> All right. We've got uh, Jean in France with us on board. Nice to have you with us, Jean. Or is that Jean? Jean. All right. Hans is with us as well. Hans, who was um, prominent on the Wild Wind Beach. Uh, he was here for most of the season this year, last year, in fact, with a foiling moth, no less. Very good. Uh, Hans says, good luck to Max and Gerhard. Yeah, good luck, guys. All right. Bart is with us. Looking forward to meeting you and racing against you in Ocean Springs. It's a great venue. Yeah, I've been hearing good things about Ocean Springs. So if um, you happen to be in the area, start of April, head down, come and say hello, and I'll be um, there. Yeah, looking forward to it very much. All right, Mark says, Prestige Magazine Award mentioned in International Hobie Cat Association February Update newsletter. All right, gotcha. All right, Leland Lee says there are mosquitoes all over here in Florida. I think he means the flying stabby insect rather than the catamaran there. All right, so Ryan says, uh, by the way, uh, this is more good stuff here. The album was a surprise treat to my ears. I guess I'm guilty of assuming Joe was going to be playing some intense sailing music, but it's a real treat to the ears, ear candy. Yeah, if you don't know what Ryan's talking about, is uh, last week, maybe the week before, I'm actually uh, somewhat of a musician in my spare time, and um, I released an album of music with many different singers, and it is uh, on Spotify and every single platform on the internet where music can be listened to just put in a search for thursday nights at wildwind and you'll see it's like a blue album cover go there you'll see my name uh have a listen see what you think um it's kind of mellow but nice uh thanks ryan for that all right Hope everyone's enjoying the uh, level of enthusiasm this Q&A is coming with. Um, maybe that's because I had a week off and um, storing up more enthusiasm. Uh, definitely enthusiastic about the trip to America. So, um, like I said, if you're in the area, if you want me to jump on your boat with you for maybe half a day, a couple of hours, um, maybe a whole day, maybe you, a couple of days. Who knows? Um, and let me know if you want me to have a look at your rudders when I come over there and I'll make sure 
I bring some stuff with me for doing rudders. Okay, uh, Lee says uh, nine liners in the Hobie 16 rudder gudgeons, yay or nay? Nine liners. I could you phrase that differently? I don't know what a nine liner is. Um, all right, and while you're coming back to me on that, Lee, I'm going to go on to the next preloaded question, which is actually from Marty, who's in the Marty in Switzerland, who's in the live chat. And um, yeah, this is an unfortunate uh, thing that can happen to your boat. Um, it's when you start having problems with your front beam. So. This will happen more. I think this would be more so if you sail on salt water rather than fresh water. But um, if the boat is of a certain age, this could happen. And that is if we're looking from above. You'll have a hole in the middle of your front beam where the mast step comes through. Uh, so if we just draw a smaller version, there's the dolphin striker. And then above the dolphin striker, there are, of course, many different styles of mast step, but that will come through here. Um, so it might be a ball like that or on a Hobie 18. It's just a little fella like that uh, that it sits on. Might um, Depends on the type of boat that you're sailing. But basically what can happen over time is where this comes through your beam, even if you've had your dolphin striker um, tension perfectly, you can start getting cracking. That's some quite dramatic cracking, maybe with some hairline cracks coming off these spiky bits around there. And that is not a good situation as... I'm sure you can imagine. Um, so Marty said, what do you do if your beam is caving in at the mast step? So it might be rather than it's cracking like that, it might be kind of sinking like that. So what I personally would do, because I do um, have access to quite a few snapped masts where I can uh, take aluminium from I would take maybe three layers of mast aluminium um, and cut them nicely so that they're much bigger than the area all the all the same size um, round the corners and make sure it's all smooth at the edges because if you just cut aluminium, it's going to be really sharp. Um, so get it all rounded. Drill the hole in the middle of this plate, the right size for the dolphin striker rod to come through. And then we're just going to rivet it into the beam. So um, depending on how big you're making the plate, um, you could just do one rivet in each corner use good rivets for this the stainless steel ones and um if you are using stainless steel rivets in uh the aluminium beams on your boat then you will need to use some sort of barrier paste to stop um this chemical reaction that you can get between the stainless steel and the aluminium um and if you don't have access to uh, these this bits of old mast, then you could use, which I believe Marty decided he is going to do with his boat, is get a stainless steel plate made. This is going to be much stronger um, to, if you've just got one piece of stainless steel rather than three pieces of aluminium, because the stainless steel is, of course, very strong. And do the same thing with that. but. Of course, you don't want a chemical reaction between 
the stainless and the aluminium again. So more of this sort of barrier paste in between the stainless and the aluminium just to protect your gear. So that is what I would do. And I've done had to do that quite a few times. And um, once you've done it, it just lasts for a long time. So it's not the end of the world if you've got this sort of sunken bit on the top. What is more of an issue, and if you are looking at a um, used boat, if you're looking to buy one, one place to look on that boat, I'd say it's a very quick visual inspection and it will tell you if you want that boat or not immediately, um, unless the boat is really cheap, is here underneath the beam coming from where the uh, dolphin striker goes into the beam. If there's cracking here, it will be straight up like that. Then that means the Dolph striker at some point hasn't been uh, had enough tension on it, which means like to exaggerate the, the front beam should have a curve to it like that. And that curve is put in with tension on the dolphin striker. So the tighter, so like on a Hobie 16, for example, we tighten the dolphin striker. Let's exaggerate it. We've got nuts on here and here. So we put more tension onto there. And what that does is it pulls inwards or pushes inwards like this, which pushes this upwards. Now, if at any point this hasn't been tight enough and this beam has been allowed to go flat or worse, go the wrong way up, pretty unlikely on a Hobie cap. Um, on other boats, maybe, then we might get a crack or cracking under here. And if you've got that cracking on your beam, the only thing you can do is to actually get it welded. And there's not so many people who are welding aluminium, uh, but you can get it welded and that will extend the life of it. But really, once you've got there, that boat shouldn't really be going out in double trapezing conditions, I think. There we go. All right, back to the live chat. Um, we've got uh, one from Unknown User. That's a good name. Uh, will you do more videos of the mini cat? Uh, yes. What are your thoughts about it? I like the mini cat. Um, I know it's quite because, you know, let's not beat around the bush the mini cat is much slower than most of the boats which i feature on joyrider tv so you might think oh he's not going to like that it's not fast enough but no it's all relative when you're sat on the boat it feels quick um and it's so practical it's so easy because it's lightweight very quick to rig very easy to move around on the beach and um it's just so it takes a lot of the hassle out of going sailing because um, like with uh, a tornado, big boat, fairly heavy, definitely a lot of size to it. It's more difficult to rig um, and it's more effort, whereas the mini cat is the opposite. It's almost zero effort to get if you've got it already built and parked in your boat club then um all you've got to do is stick it on your back carry it to the water almost throw the mainsail up easy chuck it in the water and you're off that's what i think yeah but it's uh very well designed very well built um yes many more videos on the mini cat coming now if you're a subscriber and you don't like the mini cat footage um please let it be known that there will be more regular catamaran footage coming, but it may be more mini cat footage coming first. Videos, sorry. Um, so don't unsubscribe. We're going to go back to the 16, to the tornado, the F-18, uh, everything else. Um, so 
stay with me. It's not all going to be mini cat. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, Kevin says, please repeat how to schedule time with you in the US. Yeah, the best thing to do is to message, uh, send me an email. I'll write this in the live chat. Total joy rider. Yeah, that's correct. At iCloud.com. Boom. It's in the live chat. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, just send me an email. Let me know um, where you would like uh, me to come sailing with you, what type of boat it is, anything specific that you want to work on, uh, what sort of time scale you're looking at, what your days are when you're available. So as I said, I'll be in Ocean Springs from around the 30th of March to the 8th of April. Uh, but most of that time is for the events that are going on. So I won't be available during that period. But either side of that period, um, then yes. So send me an email and we can start a, co a communication in that way. Great stuff. All right. So Lee says Nyliner is similar to the New York style nylon, new style, sorry, not New York, new style nylon bushing. The Nyliner is thinner, so you don't have to drill out the casting. I guess the Nyliners were a big thing back in the day. Yeah, um, I think, yes, use the Nyliners. If, uh, um, if you've got an older 16 and that is the right size, take play out. What we're trying to do with any bushing in your rudder system is so that it doesn't move. So it's still steer. Where's my hand? It's here. So it's still steer, uh, but it won't wobble from side to side. So, yes. All right. Declan said, will you put your travel dates and destinations in your next newsletter, please? Yes, um, I certainly will. Um, great reminder there, Declan. If you're not subscribed to the Joyrider TV newsletter, head over to totaljoyrider.com and you'll see at the bar at the top says sign up for the newsletter. Click on there and it will take you over to a sign up page and I will be um, in your inbox or in your spam inbox uh, approximately every couple of weeks just to let you know everything that's going on, like the dates and places of uh, where I uh, will be in the States. All right. So um, I have got one more preloaded question. So no more questions, please, in the live chat, because we have been going almost an hour now. Um, but this one is from Francis. Um, who asks, this is a um, response to a beginner catamaran sailing lesson. Why do you release the main sheet when you tack? This is a very good question because why would you let it out if all you've got to do is pull it back in again? Sounds like you're just making an extra job. All right. So um, what's your like drawing a picture here so i'm going to draw a picture here is the boat there's the mast and um here's the main sail here's the jib if you're lucky enough to have one so basically what we're doing with the main sheet during attack is we're helping to steer the boat using the main sail using pressure in the mainsail. So when the boat isn't moving, if we pull the main sheet in, what it's doing, if we imagine our main pivot point um, on the boat is around here, this is where the boat pivots, like down this line. Any pressure that we put behind there is going to push like this. So if we put pressure 
behind the pivot point. It's going to push here. Boat's going to pivot there. And it means the boat will turn up into the wind. Is that pretty clear? So if we push there, boat's going to pivot there. It's going to turn up into the wind. Uh, let's draw the wind. Wind is there. That is why before we tack, we pull the main sheet in tight because it helps to drive the boat to put this pressure behind the pivot point to drive the boat up into the wind. Now, the reason that we let the main sheet off when the boat is pointing straight up into the wind, it's the same reason, which is if we don't, we're still going to have this pressure behind the pivot point, which is then going to try to put us into the wind again. So by letting the main sheet out when we head to wind, this allows the boat to bear away from the wind on the new tack much more easily. Uh, yes, sometimes we can just keep the main sheet uh, cranked in tight. If you're sailing a boat, which is quite easy to tack, like a boat with dagger boards or center boards, then you can leave the main sheet cranked in. Won't be such a nice tack, but you'll still get round the tack. But you should get into the habit of every time you head to wind during your tack, that is the time to loosen just this much main sheet. Um, or if you want a higher um, success rate, more main sheet is going to mean that you're less likely to stall your tack. So in the same way, if you just can't get like one of the most frustrating things for catamaran sailors is when you just can't get the boat moving. And every time it starts moving forwards, it goes up into the wind. What do we do? First thing to do is let the main sheet off. Let the main sheet off completely and let the traveller off as well, because that's going to help as well. Because if we've still got the traveller in, there's still a chance that the wind... Sorry, wind is blue, as we know, um, that the wind is going to catch the back edge of the mainsail. And even if it just catches it a little bit, it's going to try to put the boat back up into the wind. So if you can't get going, let the main sheet out. If you've let the main sheet out and you can't get going, let the traveller out as well. And if everything is loose there, just focus on which way you've got the rudders and you'll be able to get it in gear going forwards again. So I hope that helps there, Francis. Um, just one more in the live chat from Marty, who says, I'll be going stainless steel for the repair on the Hobie 18 front beam. Fortunately, the beam has no cracks under underneath, like you just said, and has good tension. Good tip as always. Yeah, thanks, Marty. And thanks to everybody for tuning in today or tuning in when you watch this uh, in the next days. I think after a couple of days, then people are more likely to wait until the next one, I think. But uh, thanks very much. Yes, um, head over to TotalJoyRider.com and check out the Speed Stick, those new T-shirts over there. Absolutely cooking. I'd say it's probably my best design yet. Um, let me know what you think in the comments to this one or anywhere else uh, across everywhere. Okay. Thanks very much. Have a great weekend and I'll see you soon with some more on Joyrider TV. Don't forget to hit the like button if you haven't done already. Thank you.